All right, so now that we've got our ramp in place, let's go and uh, start focusing on the deck portion of the, the quarter pipe. Okay, let's focus on this deck area. So it's kind of like this, this area where like the skateboarders will stand or the inline skaters will stand at the top here, uh, waiting for their turn. All right, and so what we need for this is I need that top curve again because we're going to start from there. All right, so we're going to get this top curve up here. And that comes from... Where do we get that top curve? Oh, sorry, it's over here. So we want to get it from here. All right, so let's do that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is drop down a null node right here, and we're going to say out uh, top curve. All right, so notice how we're starting to utilize work that we've already done. I mean, that's the more and more you start using the nodes and Houdini, uh, you'll start doing this. So you're not having to redo all this work. Uh, I mean, the line's already there, so we might as well just start from there. Okay. So let's make an object merge node and start a new little thread here, a new little stream. All right, so I'm going to say get uh, top curve, like so. And I'm going to click and drag this guy into that object one slot and then turn off that import transform option. All right, so now we've got the curve there, so we can work just on this guy and stay focused. All right, so let's drop down a transform node. And what I'm going to do is this is going to basically determine the uh, deck depth. All right, so this will be our deck depth option here. And what we're going to do is we're going to control that with the Z value. So I'm going to push it back in, uh, let's say, negative 0.5, so half a meter. All right, so now I've got these two curves here that allows us to um, create the deck geometry. All right, cool. So uh, one thing that we need to do now, um, and I should actually get rid of these points. So let's do that. Let me show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to drop down a facet node. And I don't really need this extra. We could always resample it later on if we if we really need to. So what I'm going to do is inside of this facet node, I'm going to remove inline points. And that works because those points in the middle there are literally in line with each other. All right. It won't work if it's actually curved. They need to be in line. But it works in this case. So a nice quick little fix for that. So now we've got a clean curve. All right. So let's merge these two guys together. So I'm just going to select them both. I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard. I'm going to hover my mouse over one of these outputs and then left click and drag. And that automatically creates a merge node for us. So now I've merged both those curves together. Okay. And what I'm going to do is create an add node because I really just need kind of the geometry on the outside here. I don't need the geometry on the inside here, at least not for the way that I'm modeling this particular ramp. So with this add node, I can actually go and delete all the geometry. So it leaves me with just the points. So it's this option right here. I'm going to select that polygons tab. I'm going to go to by group and I'm going to set this to skip every nth point. And what that does is it gives me the side curves, all right? So now I can actually take this deck depth curve right here and these two side curves, and I can create one path, all right? So let's do that. So I'm going to select this guy, and I'm going to select this guy. Again, I'm going to hover over the output of this add node and then left-click and drag to create another merge node. And I'm going to actually sort my inputs here so that it's a little bit cleaner. To, to do that, select the merge node and hit this little up arrow there. So look at that, we now have a you know full curve. But if I turn on my point numbers, we actually have overlapping points here. So we need to take care of that. I need to actually fuse those guys back together like so. All right, so there we go. So now I've got a nice curve. But if you actually look at it even further, if I turn on my primitives, I actually have three primitives and I actually need just a single curve or single primitive. So at this point, what we can do is we can get a join node. So I'm gonna take a join node here. And then I'm going to basically set the only connected option. And look at that. We now have a single primitive and fused point. So zero, one, two, three. Awesome. Cool. So with that, I can build now the, uh, the back of the geometry. So I can actually go and create another transform node here. And inside of this transform node, I'm just going to drop the geometry all the way to the floor. And to do that really quickly, we just put or zero for the Y value there. And then I can merge both these guys together. So I'm going to select them both, the join node and the transform node. So I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard, hover over one of the outputs, and make a new merge node, like so. And with that all created, I can now run that through a skin node. All right. And that will go and create the geometry for me for the sides of my deck. All right. And then all we really need to do at this point is create the top, po top portion there. All right. And so I can actually just duplicate this join node here. Okay, so I just held down Alt, left click and drag to create a duplicate. All right, so I'm going to create a duplicate here. 
And I'm actually going to put this on wrap last to first, like so. And currently it's not actually working for me. Uh, and that's because I have it on only connected. Okay, so I have wrap last to first, and then I need to turn off the blend. And now we have a polygon sitting there. And all we need to do is reverse that. All right, very cool. So with that done, I can just pull this guy right down next to that other skin node, and we can just merge these guys together. So now I've got a nice little box that sits on the back of the, uh, the ramp there. Okay, so let's go and take care of the UVs for this. All right, and that's pretty easy. Uh, let's make two groups for this. Uh, I'm gonna say create a node here. Well, actually, you know, in this case, it's not really all that necessary. Uh, we'll make a group here just in a little bit for the whole thing. But let's just drop down a UV unwrap and drop that, that guy down there. And um, let's go and take a look at the results of this. All right. So we get all of our geometry. I would actually like to have these guys all still connected to each other. So that's kind of what I was thinking of at, at first. So let's make a group node up here. This way we could uh, uh, unwrap them differently using different methods. All right. So we'll call this the top like so. And then I'm going to make duplicate that with the alt left click technique. And this is going to be called the sides like so. All right. And this works because by default, this base group is option is enabled. So if I were to take a look at this in the uh, scene view, all those polygons are selected. Okay. So in this first uh, unwrap node, I'm just going to uh, select the top. All right. We don't need to do the sides. I want the sides to be all connected. So that's perfect for the top. And then I'm going to use a UV uh, flatten node for the sides. All right, so let's wire this guy up like so. And then for the group, let's do the sides. All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah, so this basically is unwrapping it nicely. So the, all the faces are connected. All right, so I won't have any seam issues. Beautiful. All right, so then let's do a group delete. I don't need those groups anymore. And I don't want them, you know, dirtying up my network here. So I drop down a group delete. And let's uh, use this little drop down here to delete uh, the inner prims, the sides, and the top. We don't need any of those groups anymore. And while we're at it, why don't we do that same operation? So I'm going to duplicate that node, cut it off like so using the scissors. That's the Y key on the keyboard. All right. And let's just get rid of all the extra uh, groups that we don't need here. So I'm going to clear this out and just take a look at the groups that I have. And I don't need end caps or inner points for that either. All right, so let's duplicate it. Let's use Y to cut the, the wire and put it over here. And let's take a look at the groups that we have. So I don't need backs or extrude side there. And this is just good to clean it up so you don't end up with a bajillion uh, groups on your mesh at the very end. All right, so let's take a look at all the groups that we need to do here. And so I'm just going to get rid of inner points. All right, so now we're all cleaned up. We don't have any extra uh, spare groups just hanging around. All right, so I'm going to grab at the assembly node and just move it down here. These guys are, this one ended up a little bit long there just to make the, the deck. All right, so let's go and group this guy. So we'll call this uh, the deck group, like so. And actually, let's put that lowercase. I like to keep all my group names with lowercase values. And then let's go borrow the color node from the ramp over here because it has that same color. And I'm going to cut the wire there. And we just want to go and put this at the, the end of this deck network here. And there we go. So now it's the same color. Awesome. And then let's put down our null node and we'll say out deck. Easy peasy. Well, let's add that to our assembly node. So I'm going to create a new slot by hitting this little plus button and then drag and drop it right into that extra slot there. Now I've got all this geometry coming together nicely. Let's turn off all of our point numbers and prim numbers. Yeah, you know, not a complex model, but a really good exercise in learning how to procedurally model. One thing I noticed, I should actually extend the pipe out a little bit farther than the edge there. So to do that up here where we're making the coping, all right, and I get that last uh, curve there. Let's go and make it a little bit longer. So let me actually do that here before we send it out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is drop down a transform node after that node there, and let's just give it a little bit of scale in X. So it's just a little bit bigger. So we'll say 1.15. All right, let's take a look at the result of that. And that was way too much because I put in 11. 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually still too much. Let's do 1.05. Yeah, well, let's do 2.5. I, I just need a little bit. It doesn't need to be way off. Do 0 0.05. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, cool. We are ready to go. We've got UVs for everything. Let's put this guy in a net box. So we'll shift O and we'll call this deck. And there we go. Uh, one thing I do like to do, I like to kind of clean these up, make it all, you know, even. So I'll pull all these guys down here, even though the network doesn't come all the way down. And it's just something that I like to do. I'm a little OCD about it all. Uh, you don't have to do this. All right. Houdini is flexible. You can create a workflow however you see fit. All right. Cool. So there we go. We have our deck in place. We're actually almost done with this whole entire model. Pretty cool. Let's move on to take care of the railing now. Thanks so much.